The research brought to you by DigiKey Native Fruit. Every single week, Lady Ada uses the power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find your things on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week? Okay, so we got to Wait, does, I, can't you, can you just type into the Google, Google Gemini Nano Banana and get the answer? Why can't, what, seriously, just before you start, this is a great search. Why can't you just type in something, because AI is the new thing I hear. Why can't you just type in what you're looking for and find it? Okay, the good question. Um, right. Because some some people are great like, answer. how come how come I can ooh, ask? Ooh, ooh, my segment's called the great question. The great question. Yeah. Okay, what do you? Do? I, that's an excellent question. Yeah. Um, so the reason is that the 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 the, lo the lowest level answer is AI mo and the LLM AI models are trained on what content is on the internet. There is not a lot of content on the internet on specking parts and part specs because that is contained yeah. in data sheets and it's not. You're extracted into a human language. You're doing it though. Yeah, because it's like I have expertise, but I'm I'm doing like predictive behavior based on past expectations, not um, hashing and slicing existing information. Like there's a lot of code on the internet, like tons, like tons and tons and tons. And so if you've trained an LLM on code, it's very easy for it to create compilable code. Not necessarily the correct code, but at least it does compile. Um, whereas components come and go very quickly. And also, like I said, knowing how to parse out the data sheets and specifications is, is non-trivial. Um, it, again, it's, it's, if people didn't discuss that part on Reddit a lot, you, you're not going to have it show up in, <laughs> in AI. <laughs> Which is actually true. Like you know, if you, I've, I've actually as yeah, like let's say I'm building a project, and it will it will give me a very generic Reddity response. Like you should use a microcontroller like an Arduino, but it won't. It it doesn't know specs. Like I said, well, I need I need a microcontroller that has this particular specification. It it kind of falls over and dies, which is actually something we're talking about not in this great search, but the next one, um, because we need a very specific uh, spec ADC. Okay, hey, great answer. That's that's the short of it. Is and I'll tell you another. For example. This week's great search, uh, we had someone contact us and they wanted to make a DIY um, spectroscopy machine, I guess. And so a common um, sensor you use is a linear a CCD. And this is a um, sensor that has pixels <coughs> um, arranged in a line. It's like a camera sensor, but the camera is exposed. It's long and it has a lot of pixels and you can read from the sensor. So a very, you know, the one that they mentioned is like, well, I like the TCD 1304. It has um, many pixel sensing elements. Um, and it comes in a line. I don't know if I can open this image. You know, it's a surdip through a hole. Um, let's see if I can get a, a data sheet in English. Um, this was used, you know, for scientific purposes. You know, most of it is, you know, they're not actually that many pins because you shift out the um, analog sensing information and it can measure light and dark levels. It only does monochromatic. But so what you would do is you would, if you had um, a, you know, a, a prism, you put a light in and it you know, splits the prism into colors and then you shine that line of um, spectrally separated light onto the sensor. You could take a snapshot and you can read what, um, wavelength colors are contained within the light that you split before the prism. So that's basically what it is. So they said, hey, can you make like a breakout for this um, TCD 1304? You also, you need to be high sensitivity and very fast, right? You can't just use like um, uh, cadmium sulfide uh, sensors. Like you actually need them to be tightly packed and, and, and very sensitive. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm going you know, to see if like DigiKey has this part. So I go to DigiKey, you type this in. And you get, you know, like they don't really, they don't have it. It's, it's obsolete, um, non-cancelable. I mean, you might be able to still get some. This is active, but it's pretty much un unavailable. Um, and it's, it's fairly expensive. So I thought, like, let's go look for other linear optical sensors. Maybe there's something else that DigiKey does stock, maybe more available, more affordable, um, that could do the job as well. So we're not going to get the exact same thing, but let's look for a um, image sensor. Let's just go back to the image sensor category. And there's a lot. And one, you know, one thing is, is that there are a lot of camera sensor modules are going to be 
um, like, you know, this one is actually one that we've used, the MLX. Not, we actually covered this in a, a you know, couple of videos before. This is a, a thermal camera sensor. We don't want that. We want something that you shine a light onto. There's also these, like, this is a raw image sensor. And this is, you know, really cool if you want to make your own image sensor. You put a lens on it, but it's not, it's not linear. I want something linear. And ideally also long enough that you could, when you, when you do the spectral uh, separation, um, you have a little bit of space to work with. So let's look for um, only active, stacked. And we want one that has, it's only linear. And so you'll see there's like the times, you know, V, there's like horizontal and vertical. So we actually only want the, the one Vs. So these, and then I'll, I'll pick up the, the dashes just in case. And then let's see. So that really cuts down. So it's like basically from the 2000 options, 2400 options, we now have 45. So you can actually like do this and just take a look at what comes up. Um, so some of these are just, they don't have, they didn't have the specification. Let's move the resolution. Where's the resolution? Active pixel array. Can I pick this up? Okay, so like this one, sorry, is 1000. Um, but pretty much, yeah, anyone that doesn't have it just didn't. Uh, and then the TCDs do show up here, but again, they're, they're not in stock. So let's, I don't know if I can ignore these on semis. <coughs> but let's look at, um, let's just look at the active pickle array, uh, pickle, pixel array. I would love a pickle array. So it looks like the ones that are stocked and available, because again, it, you know, the, at the bottom we have those TCDs, which are like not really available. They do have a range from S-Pros Photonics, so it's a Swiss company, EG, and um, they do come in a couple different configurations. It looks like you can basically get, you know, 1,000 pixels, not as many as the TCD, which was 3,000, but maybe 1,000 is still good enough, like the image image elements. And it's half the cost. Um, and most importantly, there's a lot in stock. So, you know, you're going to basically have a trade-off between, um, you know, how big the pixels are in the resolution. But let's take a look. Data sheet real fast. At this series. So there's a couple different. I don't know why you would necessarily want one with fewer pixels, but maybe it's just the pixel pitch um, that you're looking for. You have the slowest. Data sheet in the world. What is Google saying that I'm right? I feel like I'm in like the <laughs> 90s, I'm like waiting for my file to download. Okay. 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 There you go. <clears throat> okay. So high performance um, CCD. It looks like it can do four frames of storage, which is kind of nice. Pixel size in the micrometer, um, single power supply. Package looks pretty easy to pick in place. I mean, it's ball grid, but the balls are kind of enormous. And has gain. Um, you can do region of interest. You can set like, you know, I want to just look at one section. And gives you like a differential output. You can figure it over I squared C. So it's actually kind of nice. It's like a moderner version. Looks like you can also do you know, it's like a camera, you have shutter control. So this could be kind of neat, this sensor. But most importantly, it's stopped. It looks like this is like the sensor that people would use for this kind of measurement. Again, it's not a common. I mean, you know, I think historically, if you look at like the TCD, they were like, you would use this for, um, you know, measuring, like, bar like doing barcode readers. But the fact is, like, that's not how people just take a photo of the barcode. Now, it's actually cheaper to take a little image of the barcode and do image processing than to try to scan it with a laser necessarily. Yeah. Or, yeah, it's like, you know, things just get like, cameras get cheaper. But if you don't want a CCD, this looks this looks pretty good and it's in stock and, you know, pretty straightforward to use. You can figure it over I squared C. Like the TCD, you do want to clock it out to get the analog voltage. You don't read the voltages over I squared C. It's not fast enough because you really need to like kind of, you want to, get through it very quickly. Three volt power supply, which is nice. 
Um, so it means it's compatible. Looks like you might need to give it a, a clock or something, but yeah, and it's like, you know, there's some, some configuration. I think you tell it what mode you want it to be in. Um, so I think this would be, yeah, like binning, voltage, amplification, which direction you want to read, and then um, whether you want it to, to, to maybe pulse out the data on its own or you want to clock it out. So yeah, it looks good. So this is what I would pick. It's in stock. There's a couple thousand of them. Lots of them available. So um, the 901, for example, is totally fine. 256 um, pixel sensor, whichever number of pixels you want. You know, the pixel will be wider, so maybe you'll get um, better. If you especially have dim light, and you want to, you know, you want to have more surface area. You pick the resolution that matches um, the minimum number that you want, so you get the biggest pixel size, get the most light absorption, um, to get more precision, maybe even more accuracy. Um, but if you want the highest pixel density, this one is good too. The EPC901 series from SPROS Photonics. So that's my pick for the great search. That's a great search. CCDs. Wait.